welcome to our program, Discovering Justice. For information about this program and any other of our programs, please follow our website at www.discoveringjustice.net. My name is Attorney Lucy Rivera, and I am your host today. In our program today, we have a very special guest, and we are very proud to have her here today, United States Attorney Carmen Ortiz. Welcome, United States Attorney Carmen Ortiz. Thank, Thank you. you for being here. Thank you. I'm delighted. United States Attorney Carmen Ortiz has dedicated her life to public service. Nominated by President Barack Obama for the United States Attorney position in the District of Massachusetts, she was ratified and confirmed by the U.S. Senate, United States Senate, on November 5, 2009. U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz is the first woman and also the first Hispanic to hold the United States Attorney position in Massachusetts. It is a pleasure to have you, and please talk to us about this job that you have now. It's a very important job as a United States Attorney for the District of Massachusetts. Yes, <clears throat> it really, really is. I am um, one of 93 United States Attorneys throughout the country, and uh, in some states there are, there's more than one U.S. Attorney, there are four uh, or two U.S. Attorneys, but Massachusetts, the District of Massachusetts has one U.S. Attorney, and that's me, and I'm very, I feel very, very proud and very honored that the President had confidence uh, to nominate me to the Senate and that the Senate then confirmed me for this, for this job. Uh, you know, as U.S. Attorney, I'm the Chief Federal Law Enforcement Officer. I oversee all federal prosecutions and matters here in the state of Massachusetts. Uh, we have a criminal division and we have a civil division and we uh, investigate and prosecute federal crimes mm -hmm. and uh, we also um, pursue cases on behalf of the United States government in civil court in the federal district court. Mm -hmm. uh, cases involving discrimination, uh, violations of the Hair, uh, uh, Fair Housing Act mm -hmm. uh, and also uh, American with Disabilities Act. Uh, we also defend the government when the government is sued as well. Uh, I run an office that uh, has a little over 240 employees, mm -hmm. and so, um, you know, it's, it's a very important job. And, and our key goal, really, is to do everything we can to keep the people of Massachusetts safe. And that's a really important, very important uh, place that you have right now. And you also have different offices in Massachusetts. It's a big state. That's right. We have our main offices in Boston mm -hmm. uh, at the uh, John the Joseph Moakley Courthouse. Yes. Uh, and, um, but we have two branch offices, mm -hmm. one in Springfield and one in Worcester. And uh, this, this very important job, how did you become the United States Attorney for Massachusetts? What is the process? Well, the process varies from mm -hmm. state to state, but I'll, I'll focus on Massachusetts. Uh, when President Obama became the President uh, of the United States, uh, he gets to select all of the U.S. attorneys. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and typically, uh, what happens is the senior senator of a state will make that recommendation to the president. And there are different methods that are put into place. Here in Massachusetts, Senator Edward Kennedy, mm -hmm. who was alive at the time, set up an advisory committee, mm -hmm. uh, a group of lawyers and judges, uh, to review applicants. And they encouraged people uh, mm -hmm. from the state and, and elsewhere to apply to be U.S. Attorney. So I decided in March of 2009 to apply. Mm -hmm. I filled out a very lengthy application. Mm -hmm. uh, I was very fortunate that um, during the screening process I was selected for one of the interviews. I interviewed with the committee and, uh, and then the committee checks uh, your references and, other, and others that you've noted and then um, they recommended three individuals to the senator of which I was one and then um, I met with uh, members of Senator Kennedy's staff, mm -hmm. his chief of staff at the time, uh, and then I received a call from the senator telling me that uh, he and Senator Kerry were going to recommend me to the president for the uh, job of U.S. attorney. And I can't tell you how touched I was and, um, and humbled that day when I received his call and uh, I felt that I was uh, on my way to achieving a dream of a lifetime. And this is geared towards your career in public service. What drew you to a public service career? Well, I think that primarily um, 
I've been throughout most of my career in public service. I was a state prosecutor uh, for many years. I worked at Harvard Law School on a criminal justice project involving uh, the judiciary and other um, legal officials from Guatemala for a number of years. And I think it was an opportunity for me to give something back. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been very fortunate in my life. I've really had a number of great opportunities. Uh, and so I saw a career in public service uh, as an opportunity to give something back, but also to do what I could um, to see that justice was served. As a, as a prosecutor especially, I have the opportunity to uh, handle cases where I, I help victims. Mm -hmm. But also in the process of helping victims, I make sure as a prosecutor that defendants' rights are also respected uh, and that they're ensured, that they're being followed. Uh, and so it, it, it's a great way, I think, uh, to give something back to the community, but also to, to help uh, in the criminal justice process. Yes. And um, your job not right now as a U.S. District Attorney, um, I read that you worked in, in, at the United States office for 12 years. But how are the role, obviously right now you're the, uh, the U.S. attorney, and how is it different now uh, that you are in this situation, in this position? Well, I was a, a line prosecutor, as we call ourselves, a line assistant U.S. attorney, for 12 and a half years in the Economic Crimes Unit uh, at the office investigating and prosecuting uh, complex financial crimes. And so as a, as a prosecutor, basically an investigator and trial attorney, I handled cases. I uh, worked with uh, federal agents and local law enforcement putting cases together and then resolving them by way of a, of a guilty plea or by taking them to trial. And, and you know, it was a small, it, it, it was a very uh, focused area of responsibility. But now as the U.S. attorney, I manage uh, an entire office of about 240 employees or so, uh, employees that are consist of lawyers, of uh, support staff, of auditors, paralegals, and so um, you know it, it's just more uh, of area of, of responsibility. The other key thing about my job is that while I, when I was a line attorney, I focused primarily on financial crimes. As a U.S. attorney, I get involved in cases of all types. Um, cases involving uh, national security, cases okay. involving public corruption, cases involving uh, health care fraud uh, and uh, civil rights matters. And so my area of focus is so varied. And one of the, the wonderful things I, I have felt uh, I've learned uh, in my role as U.S. Attorney is really all the great work that the office does uh, to uh, really serve the public and, and, and the district as a whole. Uh, it's tremendous variety in terms of the different federal crimes that we cover and also the civil work that we do. And um, what are your objectives and your goals in, in your position? Well, um, my goals, as I said, uh, is not only is, is to, to do what we can uh, to keep the public safe, mm -hmm. to, to investigate cases in the area of the priorities I just mentioned, um, but also my goal is um, that we have a real impact um, in, in, in national security, in public corruption, in civil rights, in helping local law enforcement, uh, for example, in Boston, in Brockton, in Lynn, and other communities that are suffering uh, you know, from violence and gangs, that we uh, do our best to work in our, our youth violence efforts. And so th those are, are primarily uh, you know, our key focus. Mm -hmm. <coughs> And uh, could you elaborate a little bit more on the security, uh, national security efforts of your office? Yes, I, um, you know, one of the things that I, I, I've wanted to do uh, is that not only do we investigate and prosecute cases as an office, but I think that I've wanted to expand the role of the prosecutor uh, to do outreach, to mm -hmm. really be involved in the community and to collaborate with others. And we've always done that as an office, and I've wanted to enhance that more. In national security, we work with many different partners in the state uh, on the federal level mm -hmm. and state and local uh, to make sure that we're doing everything we can to share information, to gather information, and to work together in case uh, a crisis occurs or an emergency or, or a national security situation comes up. And so we have different forums we work together with. We have the Joint Terrorism Task Force, mm -hmm. which consists of law enforcement, um, the business community, government agencies that get together 
uh, frequently. We work together with the Anti-Terrorism Advisory Committee. We also have a counter-proliferation working group that works on cases involving the illegal exporting of technology, sensitive United States technology. So we do that. And then one of the other key areas that we do is we have um, regular meetings with community members of the Arab and Muslim uh, religious communities, as well as law enforcement and other community members. <coughs> we get together. We talk about issues of concern. We share information. And so that's a way of keeping our door open to ensure that we get the message out that we're there to protect you. Uh, we're there not only in an effort of national security, but we're also there to protect civil rights and civil liberties. Thank you, U.S. Attorney Ortiz. And we're here at Discovering Justice. Do follow us at www.discoveringjustice.net. My name again is Attorney Lucy Rivera, and we're here with our guest today. Is uh, we're very proud to have U.S. Attorney Carmen Ortiz here, and. Um, she was talking to us about the civil rights initiatives that her office has put through. Would you, would you elaborate a little bit more about your efforts in the civil rights yeah. uh, area? Sure. We, um, we work closely with the Department of Justice's um, Civil Rights Division, uh, who is headed by uh, Tom Perez there. And um, in March of uh, 2010, I established the civil rights enforcement team in my office, mm -hmm. which is a collaboration, a group of lawyers from our criminal division and civil division to handle cases involving civil rights violations. And on the criminal uh, side of it, we're focusing on cases involving hate crimes, uh, excessive force, uh, and uh, human trafficking. And on the civil end, we're trying to pursue cases involving discrimination, violations of the uh, Fair Housing Act, American with Disabilities Act, uh, and, and, and in that line. And one of our key areas is to try to get referrals uh, involving civil rights violations and also to reach out to the community and let them know that this is one of our priorities. These are the kinds of cases that uh, we're interested in doing um, uh, on, on a federal level. And, uh, and so we're doing a bit of community outreach uh, to law enforcement, but also to community organizations and to non-governmental organizations so that they know uh, that they have a voice here. And we work closely with the FBI and other federal agencies uh, to pursue these cases. And is this a new initiative in your office? Yes, it is, because there really has not been a focus mm -hmm. on civil rights. And not only is it important uh, to, to me and, and to make sure that our office is focusing on it, uh, but it's a big initiative from the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice has expanded its civil rights division, uh, and all over the country it's generating more cases. We had one of the most uh, serious uh, cases that is now pending in our Springfield office mm -hmm. in which we are prosecuting three individuals, two of which have pled guilty and one is facing trial involving a burning of a church on the uh, eve of when uh, President Obama got elected. And this was a church that was primarily um, um, where the parishioners were of African American um, descent. And the church was burnt down simply because um, the president, uh, Barack Obama, had been elected president. Uh, and the defendants were not happy about that and were, and wa were angry about that, that a, a black man had uh, risen to this position of authority and power uh, and so they uh, conspired to burn the church and they did burn it down and they are being prosecuted and that's one of our biggest civil rights cases out in our Springfield office. And what is another case that strikes you as uh, uh, important in your office recently or since you've well, been there? I think recently the cases involving um, charges of political corruption. Um, we recently had two matters that were uh, resolved, one by way of a, of a plea. Diane Wilkerson, the former state senator, pled guilty to accepting bribes. And um, Charles Turner, the Boston city councilor, uh, was convicted by a jury of accepting a bribe uh, and then of lying to the FBI uh, regarding the taking of that, that bribe. Uh, and right now we have uh, another matter that's pending um, the former Speaker of the House, Sal DeMacy, who is uh, facing trial along with three other co-defendants um, 
in April in, in federal district court. Um, uh, you, Mr. Ortiz, you are a Hispanic, first uh, uh, Latina, the La Primera Hispanic woman to have this position, and a woman as yes. well. What are the challenges that you, that you feel are out there for a Hispanic attorney in our field? Uh, well, I have felt uh, not, not so much in this position because I think that I came to this job with 30 years of experience. Yes. And I, I've been a prosecutor. I've done uh, civil litigation. I've been a defense attorney. Uh, I've done criminal justice work at Harvard Law School. And so I feel I have a tremendous amount of experience. And um, it hasn't been so striking here. But I think in the past, in my professional career, especially as a young Mm -hmm. uh, female lawyer uh, and when I was raising a family especially I think that we uh, as women and certainly Hispanic have to overcome certain stereotypes mm -hmm. that people envision and I think that uh, you know as, as a woman uh, sometimes uh, th there is a double standard uh, I remember mm -hmm. once when one of my daughters was very young and uh, I had a child care issue and I had to bring her to court with me and so I brought her to court. She was very quiet, mm -hmm. but I could see the looks <laughs> of people. Uh, and then there was another time when I was tied up and my husband had to take her to court because he was a lawyer as well. And uh, he came back home and he said, oh, you wouldn't believe everybody thought I was the best dad in town <laughs> because he had taken her to work with him. He had taken her to court. Very different perceptions. Uh, and I think as a Hispanic, sometimes people don't think that we're smart enough or work hard enough. Uh, sometimes people have perceptions of wrongdoing. And so I try to make an impression. I try to make an impact. And I think I've, you overcome those stereotypes uh, by doing your best, by working hard, by being committed, uh, by being a loyal uh, colleague uh, and employee. And so uh, I think I've had tremendous opportunities uh, and have benefited from those opportunities. So it, it's worked out pretty well for me so far. Did you ever think that you would be the United States attorney for Massachusetts? Um, you know, I, 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 I didn't uh, see it in such a striking way, but, but I hoped. I always had a lot of ambition. And uh, I think sometimes, uh, you know, you have certain dreams, and, 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 and life, you know, gives you certain setbacks. And so you, you pause in, 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 in that. In, in, in that ambition, but I, uh, I think uh, that uh, I certainly feel very confident because of the experiences that I've had, the support uh, that I've also uh, have benefited from, and so uh, I, I, I thought there was something special for me, uh, something big that I was going to do, and I think that I've been given the opportunity, and I, I'm thrilled and, and, and very humbled to have it. So what would you advise the, um, the attorney, Hispanic attorneys out there, the, the, or the women attorneys who are um, in that situation starting a career and going through? I think that, you know, I, uh, when I, I talk about this, uh, especially the different uh, groups, especially women and young lawyers, young women lawyers and Hispanics, Latinas, mm -hmm. uh, and really to everyone who's just starting out, I think that I, I always tell them that it's really important that um, you you work really hard, that you strive to make an impression in whatever position you have, uh, that you never give up, that you don't let life setbacks set you down. Don't be afraid to take risks. Don't be afraid to go for that promotion, to go for that particular job. Even if you think you may not get it, you have nothing to lose by taking that risk, by going for it. And I think that it's really important that you be confident that you believe in yourself, and more importantly, that you surround yourself with people who believe in you. So that when you're facing challenges, uh, when you're facing certain hardships, uh, people can help you overcome those hardships, deal with those challenges, and they will encourage you, encourage you to do what you want to do in, in your career uh, and in your personal life as well. Because I think that life, we should all try to fulfill uh, everything in life that's going to make us happy. And I, I've always believed that, I, I've always been one of those women that has really wanted it all, the career, the family, the friends. And if you work hard enough and, and you strive to gain that balance and you figure out how to prioritize, I, I think you can have it. 
Well, it's, it's inspiring and it's definitely a role model for a lot of Latinas out there and, and women in general. And it's so important that you're here with us today. And um, I think it's so important that you're um, in your office to talk about, uh, I would like to hear about the, the different um, areas that the US, the U.S. Attorney's Office is handling. Uh, because it, as you say, you are managing a really big office. Would you expand on that? Um, the different areas and the different departments that you have under sure. your management and sure, I um, you know I run the office with the first assistant, mm -hmm. uh, Jack Pirazzolo, uh, who does a great job. He's really a terrific right hand mm -hmm. um, uh, colleague of mine. Uh, and then I have managers throughout the office in the criminal division. Uh, it's headed by a chief, uh, Jim Lang, and a deputy chief, uh, John McNeil. And, uh, and then my civil division is yeah. headed by Rosemary Connolly. And I really yeah. depend on them uh, to help me run the office. But within the criminal division especially, we have a tremendous number of different units. Yes. We have a public corruption and special prosecutions unit. We have an economic crime unit. We also have a health care fraud unit, mm -hmm. which does tremendous work. We had, had very big, huge settlements uh, and prosecutions in the health care fraud arena. Uh, we have a strike force uh, organized crime and gang unit. Mm -hmm. We have the drug unit, uh, and we have the major crimes unit. We also have the computer crimes unit. So there are all these units, and they're each headed by a unit chief that runs the unit uh, and oversees uh, the, the case intake, uh, how those cases are assigned, and how they're investigated and prosecuted. And on the on the uh, on the civil side, we have two separate units. Um, that handle the litigation in terms of the cases that we, we, we bring suit against, that we represent the United States in. It's an affirmative litigation unit, and then we have a defensive unit. But we also have a unit that um, deals with forfeiture. So we have an asset forfeiture mm -hmm. unit and financial litigation unit, and not to mention the administrative division, and that's all the uh, people who support the office, you know, like the budget director and human resources and personnel. And so, you know, all of those parts of the office is, is what makes the, the office function and do, uh, you know, the job that it's responsible for doing. And you know the office so well after being there for 12 years. Uh, during those 12 years, you must have learned a lot in a different capacity than what you are right now. And uh, tell us about that, that experience and what you worked on during those 12 years. Surely. I, um, I handled primarily, as I said before, uh, complex financial crimes and yes. so I had cases involving um, different types of investment schemes people have been defrauded mm -hmm. uh, people who have been scammed um, bankruptcies uh, bank frauds uh, excuse me and um, uh, you know I tax evasion cases I tried a, a complex tax case uh, I also handled a telemarketing fraud case where hundreds and hundreds of people were defrauded uh, who owned timeshares. Mm -hmm. And so, and that, that was a loss of millions of dollars. I also handled a pretty big case a few years ago where the Cambodian community was targeted oh. by these fraudsters uh, and led to believe that if they invested in this business, they would be getting payments uh, for the rest of their lives. And many people lost their life savings. They lost their homes because they took double mortgages and so um, in equity lines and so that that those kinds with those were the kinds of cases that I handled as an economic crimes prosecutor and that sounds such a fascinating as a, as a defense attorney I think that is incredibly intriguing and, and important so um, I'm definitely grateful and humbled that you're here with us today US Attorney My pleasure. Ortiz um, our program has come to a conclusion but we're happy yeah. that you were able to be here with us and we definitely have so much to learn from you and and we look up to your leadership in the U.S. Attorney's Office. And uh, to our viewers, this was another program for uh, uh, Discovering Justice, uh, our monthly program. And uh, you can see this interview with Carmen Ortiz uh, in the web at www.discoveringjustice.net. Uh, but I'd like to hear about what you're interested in. And if you have any questions or comments, please contact um, us at lucinda.rivera at discoveringjustice.net or contact me at lucinda.rivera at gmail.com. Thank you, you for being here Thank you here so today. much. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. And thank you to our viewers. And we hope to see you again. And uh, 
Thank you for watching and letting us into your homes. Thank you.